Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Chunks of Glock News. I'm your host, Chunks of Earth. Today's stories are going to involve issues brought about by last night's debate. Yes, I watched the debate. I promised I wouldn't, but I did. I'm a liar and a hypocrite. Now that we've got that out of the way, while I was watching the debate, there were a few new, unique points brought up by the candidate. And, of course, his... Uh, explanations were unacceptable to me, uh, the direction he wants to go. And I, I, I just, I don't want a big businessman running a government. Those things should always remain separate. And I just, I just feel the hint of fascism coming on. Um, okay, so let's move on to the first story. Number Juan. A BBC poll conducted recently shows the rest of the world favors Obama. And why would that be? I don't know. Maybe they don't trust him, uh, Mr. Romney, either. So after Mr. Romney con uh, after Mr. Romney stated that President Obama went on an apology tour, which has been proven false, uh, and claimed that he put our nation in a weaker state based on his apparent weakness by apologizing, which he didn't apologize. He was trying to bridge the gap that George Bush Jr. left when he left office. The rest of the world hated us. We were bullies. We were pushy. We were irrational. We were um, impulsive. We were horrible in their eyes. And in many ways, I don't blame them. Now, when 50 countries, I think, 25, 50 countries, whatever's here, uh, were asked about their opinion in this election, which is interesting because we're an exceptional nation that believes if we don't do it, it's either socialism or communism or Marxist or Nazi or something. If anybody else has anything that works, we don't want no part of it. And it shows because we're number one in everything, healthcare education, environmental protection, all these things we're number one at. So when we ask the opinions of other countries, it looks like there's about 25 here, comes across that Obama is preferred over Mr. Romney. Now, why do you think that would be? In my opinion, Romney embarrassed himself when he went on his tour and he looked like a total incompetent fool. Uh, so we continue to move down this list and we see preferred candidate and we see preferred candidate for the elections let's see the first one's second one now as you can see the blue clearly outranks the red and every single country except for one thinks that mr romney is incapable or incompetent at moving us forward as a nation and which country doesn't? Pakistan. Why would that be? Maybe because they told us bin Laden wasn't there and they claimed to be working with us when they were working against us and hiding Al-Qaeda and supporting Al-Qaeda. And maybe they weren't real happy that we didn't believe them and we walked in and killed bin Laden right under their noses and finished the job that we were supposed to do, that Mr. Romney said he didn't want to move heaven and earth to finish. Mr. Bush said he didn't really care about bin Laden any longer toward the end of his presidency. These were GOP policies. They were more interested in fighting wars with nations as opposed to wars with tribes. That's why you should be really concerned about Mr. Romney's position on Iran, Syria, China, and South America. So, this is the first story. And I have to believe that I know that a lot of people, just because they like something, doesn't mean it's good. We can look at American Idiot. We can look at Dancing with the Morons. We can look at McDonald's. We can look at Fox News, most popular nation, uh, most popular news source. They're wrong about just about everything, everything, and they cherry pick. So, just because it's positive doesn't, uh, just because it's a majority doesn't mean it's good. But this is something I believe that should be. should be concerned, but sorry for my searching of words. 
Next story. Here's an interesting, a little somewhat humorous. Um, it's a story that an thermal airship in, in Florida was flying over Broward County supporting Mitt Romney. So a vehicle full of air supporting a candidate full of air crash landed due to high winds. This isn't the glimpse of a blimp-like craft we're used to seeing deflated on the ground instead of flying in the sky. Just around 7.30 p.m., neighbors in Davie looked out their window to see this, an aircraft looming over their homes at some point, hovering pretty close to treetops. We saw the blimp hovering over the house, and it was floating backwards. It looked like it was actually coming down. Much like the GOP, floating backwards. And just, it was so low to the ground. It was pretty... Uh... It's just weird. The blimp-like aircraft bearing the Republican presidential nominee's face and the slogan, America Needs Romney, made its slow descent onto a grassy patch of land in Davie, about five miles shy of its destination at North Perry Airport. It experienced some high winds and was having a difficult time and uh, crash landed here in the field uh, just south of Bamford Park in Davie. The blimp-like craft, officially known as a thermal airship, had been traveling from Boca Raton, making its way south when the pilot hit some bad winds. Immediately, spectators tweeted pictures of it deflating. It came down tail first and then the gondola struck. Uh, and then rolled to its side as it deflated. I thought, boy, Mitt Romney really wants us to vote for him. <laughs> you can call it pure coincidence. Some call it irony that the aircraft ended up deflating in Broward, a county that leans blue. The political jokes are already starting. Rosemary's bumper sticker may give you an idea of how she feels. Yeah, I burn it down with a rock. No, <laughs> why do you? A joke she says she can only make knowing that the emergency landing was a safe one and no one, including the pilot, was injured. All right. That's your second story. I figure that a little bit of amusement there. And lastly, but not leastly, when Mr. Romney talked about his pursuit of energy independence here in the States, which you hear a lot about the GOP talking about. You hear about the war on coal um, and, you know, we want to create jobs. It's already been proven by many sources that sustainable energy creates many more jobs than this oil and gas exploration uh, exponentially whether it be wind solar or even tidal energy there are jobs waiting and they're good paying jobs too because they're technical and the maintenance is going to be uh, quite popular these are sustainable jobs for a sustainable future i got into a twitter war with someone from Chevron who claimed that natural gas was cleaner than solar because of all the toxic chemicals that solar manufacturing uh, releases. Hmm. Solar panels are more dangerous than natural gas exploration. About an hour after this war occurred, this uh, article appeared where fracking poisoning families at an alarming rate. That's just speculation, right? Well, the methane coming out of taps, it just happens to occur when fracking operations are there. Um, and now we see the after effects of these chemicals that are released, these toxic sludges that are used to encourage and persuade the gas to be released. And this gentleman I was arguing with told me I knew the basic course in geology because fracking occurs thousands of feet below the surface and in no way can corrupt uh, aquifers unless the casings are bad and whatnot. Uh, he picked the wrong guy. I am a geologist by training and education. I minored in biology and chemistry, and I've been a water chemist for over 25 years. You don't want to tell me how aquifers work and how sticking straws in the ground with toxins are safe. You just don't. Uh, once I let him know what my training was, he stopped responding. Whether he won, that's up to you to decide. I report, you decide. So here's another example of why domestic exploration is not a long-term solution for energy independence. It's not progressive. It's not forward-thinking. 
It's not anything but destructive to the air, to the water, to the land. And these kind of things are going to cost a great deal of money to clean up in the future. Future. I like that word. So I'll include this link in the video. Um, and, and it's quite interesting. Quite interesting. Uh, I'll let you read it. But what, one little highlight I'd like to hear is 22 household, households reported that pets and livestock began to have symptoms such as seizures or losing hair or suddenly fell ill and died after gas development began nearby. After taking water and air samples, Earthworks detected chemicals that have been linked to oil and gas operations and also directly connected to many of the symptoms reported in the survey on residents' properties. The study showed a higher concentration of ethylbenzene and xylene, volatile compounds found in petroleum hydrocarbons at the households as compared to control sites. Those are things you don't find in aquifers unless some sort of hydrocarbons have been seeping into them. And since these aquifers were not tainted until the exploration began, it's going to be difficult to dissociate those operations with those results. So that's been your Chunks O'Clock News for October 23rd, 2012. I hope that I've shared some important information, and I hope that I've entertained a short bit, and I'll be looking to talk to you again very, very soon. I'm Chunks of Earth. So are you. May the chunks be with you.